Let us discuss today about 17th December 2015 newspaper. The first article is related to the nuclear energy and its safety for India. Now, India is pushing forward the civil nuclear cooperation deal with Japan. The deal is also critical for United States of America and Japan as most of these nuclear companies are out of business as countries are opting from are opting away from the nuclear energy. After the Fukushima nuclear disaster, many of the Western countries, including France, Germany, these also are opting out from nuclear energy. So that's why almost the Arriva, the major France company, is under bankruptcy. And further, if you see, the General Electric Company or Westinghouse or the Arriva company, everywhere the Japanese have the stakes in that. And they supply the critical components of these nuclear reactors. If you take Westinghouse, it is Toshiba. General Electric, it is Hitachi. Arriva, it is Mitsubishi. So, in this context, the Fukushima nuclear reactors, they were actually supplied by the General Electric Company. So, these, come, these are coming up in Gujarat and uh, Andhra Pradesh, that is Kovada in Andhra Pradesh, Jaitapur in Maharashtra. So, the major concerns are this. The first is the cost of production. So, the capital investment um, with regard to the establishment of the nuclear reactor is very high. And after that, um, the running costs are always going high more than the projected. If you see in the Georgia, almost it has increased by 75% the running cost. And if you go to the France, it has doubled. It shows that the cost of the nuclear energy is going to be very, very expensive. And it is almost a multiplier effect with various levels in the industry. So the electricity is the input for production of everything. So in this context, as the power cost increases, it is going to create an inflationary burden in the society. And the second thing is the liability and also the safety. Most of these reactors which are being given to India, these are not tested in the real time. These are the new designs. So as they are the new designs, they are based on, their safety is based on probabilistic studies, a lab study. So on real ground how they function, we do not know till date. And there are also complaints about the European pressurized reactor of Arriva, where its uh, vessel has found certain important uh, weaknesses. So in this context, um, the Japan went through this nuclear uh, law or else nuclear cooperation with the United States in the early 50s. So because of this Fukushima disaster, because after the Fukushima disaster, the Japanese has to invest more than 200 billion dollars um, to clean up the mess. So it means there is no benefit has come from the liability loss because the liabilities loss are made one-sided one to be advantageous to the American companies. So the same thing, the General Electric Company is pressurizing the Indian government and American government is pressurizing the Indians to agree for a liability law. So the safety is the concern. Cost is the concern, lack of an effective liability law makes or keeps us at risk financially if some disaster comes up at a later date. So, any nuclear cooperation agreement need not be haste as it has no financial or safety gains to India. The next article, it's a beautiful article related to how the public spending is changing. Now, if you take Tamil Nadu recently, there is a huge uh, deluge. After this, let's explain what is the reason for the failure of the governance. Now, governance and politics are intricately connected. So, if I see the Chennai floods as a failure of the governance and disaster management, obviously it has reasons in the politics. In this case, the politics are involving with them the competitive populism, where freebies are offered to the electorates. Because these freebies establishes some a patron client relationships or mob op relationship between the political leader and the voters. And this gardens or collects the votes for the political party. 
that is one advantage and also the freebies essentially sourced from the private companies because of this the financiers of the political parties also becomes strong which makes the political party indirectly strong so that's why the public money is shifting away from the i mean merit goods and also the public goods to these freebies the merit goods here means education and health the freebies i'm talking about are tvs refrigerators etc and public goods means roads bridges uh, sanitation all this comes under the public goods if government is investing in the public goods probably people will not appreciate and this personal connection do not establish because these are seen as the collective resources so in this context we have to clearly see that the governments have to prioritize this public goods and merit goods over short term gains through the free base then only the governance structure can be improved now the rural land holding almost halved over 20 years so it shows that the fragmentation of the land in india so if we compare this fragmentation is very high in the lower caste compared to the higher caste so this is also one of the reason for the growing rural to urban migration as the fragmentation of the land has increased the returns on the land are going to further decrease so this is a national sample survey organization study and more than 80% of the land owners in india they are the marginal farmers now who hold the less than 1 hectare so that shows the dismal state of the returns on agriculture the farmers are going to get and coming to the nairobi talks the wo talks of nairobi so now west is trying to bring in a new issues into the doha development agenda which are competition are related to the uh, free trade public sector limitations investment models etc so on the other hand the world issues related to farm subsidies are been almost dying down because the west is giving huge amount of the farm subsidies and the many of the developing countries are unable to compete this so that is the reason why india is asking for special safeguard mechanism under which any of uh, dump of the grains or uh, from the uh, developed countries are any fall in the prices of the farm goods in the international market india and uh, can raise its tariffs so that india's farmers interests are been protected that is what is the special safeguard mechanism is india is strongly stressing for this now west is trying to link it to the export competition uh, so which india is op- opposing for this so there is i mean the special safeguard mechanism is very much interest in the uh, very much necessary in the interest of the indian farmers so coming to the india bangladesh land survey we know that um, in 1974 an agreement was made 2011 a protocol was made and 2015 uh, we ratified this according to this we have this adverse position understand here the differences between conclaves and adverse possessions the conclaves are the places where a land belonging to the other country are surrounded by another country for example so in between there is a land that belongs to the bangladesh on other three sides it is surrounded by the land that belongs to the india this is called a conclave on the other hand adverse possessions on practical ground these are administered or these belong to the uh, respective countries but legally the opposite countries for example x is a land which is uh, administered or under the administration control of india but legally this land belongs to the bangladesh the people living over here are indians but the land belonged to the bangladesh legally because of the radcliffe mistake in the land boundary award now so it means on the paper this land which was there in the name of the bangladesh will be transferred to india so it is just a paper a legal transfer to demarcate a clear boundary these are called as the adverse possessions now the work is actively progress on these matters so coming to the delhi pollution the who has said 
In Delhi is the worst polluted cities among the developing countries. Now in this context, there is a ban on the movement of or registration of the new of vehicles, especially the diesel vehicles that are responsible for the particulate matter, which are having the engines greater than 2,000 cylinder capacity. So what the Supreme Court said is the people who are using these vehicles, they are generally SUV kind of and the rich people and it is not going to affect the common man. And with regard to the export slump, it is the 12th consecutive month where the export slump is visible. So here the reasons may be more than the loss of demand in the export markets. If you see lack of infrastructure in India and lack of value addition and we don't have a proper export a strategy with regard to the leather industry is concerned. So now the pharmaceutical industry is one of the things responsible for the export growth but however there are uh, FDA or some restrictions recently imposed um, with regard to Dr. Reddy's etc. These are also decreasing the Indian pharmaceutical exports. On the other hand, though the rupee appears uh, depreciating again is the dollar, but in actuality the rupee is appreciating again is the 36 basket currencies. It is due to the other currencies are much depreciated than rupee again is the dollar. Because of this, our exports are decreasing to these economies. So, in this context, infrastructure improvement, making in India, taking forward of this, these can help towards reviving the exports in India. Now, loan. So, what the uh, Sundar Pichai was talking over here on the loan project is, um, it can bring in the last mile connectivity and help in uh, rescue during the disaster management. So, that's what uh, he's talking about. Under the project loan, the balloons are being kept in the sky, the helium balloons. They are going to give the connectivity on the ground. Now, luxury vehicles are banned in Delhi. Already we have discussed this. So these are the articles for today. Thank you very much.